Now we'll talk about Joule's law. And let's look at this equation, P equals I squared R. This equation was discovered by James Joule, and he discovered this equation empirically. That means he found this by looking at the data, by taking some measurements, some physical observation. He was actually measuring the, the power and the current I and the resistance R and found out that this was the case. So he didn't do any mathematical work that resulted in this equation. It was found out empirically. And the way he put it was this. He said that the power dissipated by a resistor is proportional to the square of the current. And when we say the power dissipated by the resistor, all we mean is that there's a resistor and there's some current flowing through it. We'll call the current I. And when it goes through the resistor, the resistor gets hot. So you can imagine this heat coming off the resistor. And that heat just flows out into the air around the resistor and just disperses and basically goes away. It doesn't disappear from the universe, but it scatters and is no longer useful, no longer useful energy. And that's, what, that's all we mean by dissipated. So you could think of when you say that the, the power or the energy is dissipated by this resistor, you could think of that as the energy being used up by this resistor, energy being used from the battery or whatever power source is powering this. Or you could think of it as the energy being put out into the environment by this resistor. That's all we mean when we say the, the power dissipated by the resistor. And Joule said that the power dissipated by a resistor is proportional to the square of the current. And you see that in the equation. There's the I squared. The power depends on the square of the current I. Now interestingly, Ohm's law, which we've also looked at, V equals IR, was also discovered empirically. Both of these were found out were discovered by looking at the data, by taking measurements, by looking at observations in the real world long before there was any theoretical mathematical justification for them. And both were found to be very, very useful also. Even though they hadn't been proven, they were still accepted as valid because they proved to be the case whenever they were tested. And they were both exceedingly useful. Now, when current flows through a resistor, as we were talking about here, the result is heat. The energy used by the resistor is converted entirely to heat. This is one of the few things in the world that is 100% efficient. Electrical energy is lost, it just becomes heat, and that heat flows out into the atmosphere or into the surroundings. Now in this context, the conversion of electrical energy into heat is known as Joule heating. Named after James Joule, obviously. Joule heating. All we mean, mean by that term is the heating up of a resistance element in electric circuit. And, uh, and it's nothing new, nothing that we haven't done already. But this concept and these equations are the theory behind any electrical device that is designed to generate heat, such as an electric heater or a toaster. There's a heating element inside a toaster, and when you punch the little device down, it gets hot and you can see it glowing red, or a coffee pot. There's a heating element inside a coffee pot that's designed to heat the water, or a hair dryer or a closed clothes dryer. Any device that is designed to produce electric heat works on these principles and works according to these equations. Now remember that power is energy over time. Power is energy over time. Now solve this equation for energy. When we solve this for energy, we say energy is power times time, or just PT. Now let's substitute, let's take this P equals I squared R, take this expression for P, I squared R, and substitute it right there, and we get energy is equal to I squared R times T. And since this energy all becomes heat, it's commonly written like this. Q is I squared RT, where we use Q for heat. You remember in an earlier chapter when we dealt with heat, we used Q for heat. And think of Q as quantity, the quantity of heat. But this is a little unfortunate because now that we're dealing with electricity, Q, remember, is often used to represent charge, so to avoid the ambiguity in the Q right there, 
that's often written like this, just a h for heat. h is i squared rt. And again, this isn't anything new. This is all dealing with equations that we've seen before. But stated this way, it's known as Joule's Law. And we'll come back in the next video and look at some examples of using uh, this equation and these concepts to do some calculations.